Welcome to the beautiful world of aquascaping to the Green Aqua Gallery in Budapest, Hungary. Today we are talking about this aquarium that is right next to me. And this is a 60p aquarium, a 60 by 30 by 36 centimeters. In the past weeks, in the YouTube videos that we published for you guys, we showed a total of eight, actually seven aquariums, seven bigger aquariums that we have here in the gallery. Did we show all of them? I think, yeah. The eighth aquarium is empty right now, and uh, it's waiting to be set up. And uh, we're gonna make a different video for you guys uh, showing how we do that. In addition to those eight bigger aquariums, we have another four smaller aquariums, 64 liter aquariums to be precise. And uh, this aquarium right next to me is one of them. And uh, behind me, you can see the rest. One of them is also empty and it's also waiting to be set up. And I hope that we're gonna have some guests here at the Green Aqua Gallery who are going to help us to set up this aquarium. We really like this uh, 60p size because if you don't want to buy a bigger aquarium, don't want to spend a lot of money on gear, if you want to just try how it works for you, then it's a pretty cost-effective uh, thing to run a 60-liter tank. And if you want a nice and affordable light, you can just get this uh, ADA AquaSky, well, relatively affordable light. You can just get this ADA AquaSky uh, G that we have right above it. Today, all the RGB uh, type LEDs are really uh, popular among aquascapers. This is a little bit different because it gives you a nice and cool green, fresh green color. And as you can see on, on the whole image, the, the greens are really accentuated and it has a nice and fresh green color. It will bring a piece of nature into your room. told you that uh, like 60p is a good size for, uh, for a beginner. Obviously, this is the second step from having a nano tank, like a 30 centimeter cube. But this is the first size that I would consider big enough to have a nice and decent aquascape in it. You can have depth with it, you can have height with it, you can fit rocks in it, you can fit a lot of plants in it, and you can have uh, quite nice layouts in this kind of uh, Aquarium. This is the second aquarium in the Green Aqua Gallery that was inspired by Mr. Takashi Amano. We were visiting the ADA Gallery in Japan with my business partner Victor a couple years ago and uh, we saw there two tanks that especially inspired me. One of them was Mr. Amano's 180p tank, an island composition that we made a video about a couple of weeks ago, the 650 liter tank. You can check out the YouTube link there. Or is it there? Yeah, it's there. And this one is the next one that was also inspired by another 180p tank uh, in the same uh, ADA gallery. Obviously, the tank that uh, you see on the picture now that was made by Mr. Amano is a bigger tank. It has a, a different kind of foreground and it has obviously a lot more structure to it. It has a lot more details than our tank. But nevertheless, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about inspiration. You can get inspiration from two places, by my humble opinion. You can get inspiration from nature directly by walking in the, in, in the forests, walking in the mountains, and just look at rock formations, look at tree formations, bushes, look at different hills, chasms, whatever, valleys. You can look at rivers. There's a lot of really nice uh, inspiration to be found out there for aquarium enthusiasts. This is, uh, by my opinion also, this is a little bit more difficult approach towards building an aquarium. For beginners, I would recommend to find an aquarium that you really like, uh, copy that aquarium, 
and, and get inspired by that aquarium and start from there. Obviously, I'm not a beginner, but I also started with Mr. Amano's work here because my idea about building an aquarium that is a copy would be that you're not going to be able to make that copy precisely anyways. So it's going to be your own inspiration. By the time that you're done building the tank, it's not going to look that, like the original one, but at least you have something in your mind that will, will start you, that will give the initial kick to you in order to be able to build a beautiful aquarium based on another aquarium. actually have four bigger structures of lava stone built in this tank and I have tied Taiwan moss on it. And I was also tying Hygrophila pinatifida on the moss together with the moss on the rocks. And as a special kind of foreground plant, I was using the Hydrocotyle tripartita. Hydrocotyle tripartita is not being used very often as a foreground plant. Usually it's a mid-ground plant or you grow it on, on rocks or you put it in the background. Uh, in this case, I was thinking of doing something different and I wanted to accentuate the foreground a little bit to have something a lighter a green color in the foreground, which would give, give you a nice contrast with the darker blue of the mosses and also have some red patches of hygrophila in it. So light green, dark green, and red and all these three give you a combination of, of a nice contrast and also the fish selection is a little colorful guppies handler guppies to be precise and these will give give a tank a fresh green look as i told you before and also some color so this is why the whole thing looks like a little jewel Obviously, you need CO2 injection. We have pressurized CO2 system below this aquarium, and it will help you to have lush and green plants in the aquarium. And the CO2 uh, tank will last at least six months under this tank. As far as the substrate goes, uh, we have the ADA substrate system in the tank. You have uh, ADA power sand on the bottom, and you have ADA Aquasoil Amazonia and Aquasoil Amazonia powder on the top of it. And this helps a lot with the planting of the hydrocotyle tripartita because the roots will be held inside the substrate much better. This is the foreground plant. Check out the length of it. See that? So what I do basically when I plant it is I put it and I cut like little pieces of five to eight centimeters. And then, you know, I plant these, these bunches down and I'm, then gradually as it grows, I will trim all the stems that were growing upside and just leave the ones that are spreading downwards or sideways. And it's uh, much better. So this is Hydrocotyle tripartita from Denele. And I wanted to show you Hygrophila pinatifida. And Tigrophila pinatifida is the plant that I have on the lava stones that were glued together with a special impa glue. It's a, it's a polyester-based glue and it will not release anything into the water, so it's pretty safe for, for the livestock. So this is how uh, this plant looks like in jelly. It's a liquid jelly, you can just take it out and, uh, and, and wash the plant a little bit and then you can tie it on the moss. Don't be afraid of the size. Some, some, most of the plants that come in jelly would look like this and they would grow immensely and they would, if you don't trim it, they can, they can grow, even stem plants when they come like this, they can grow up to the surface. So small size doesn't mean that it's going to look bad or small in your aquarium. Actually, if you're looking at the, at the label on the Tropica, plant, you will see that it grows 20 centimeter tall in 30 days, which means that this will be a big plant if you leave it grow.
Another plant that we used is the uh, Taiwan moss, the Taxifilum Taiwan, right there. It says it will grow 20, 20 centimeter wide in 30 days. Well, I don't know about that. We didn't measure it, but it will go, grow everywhere and you need to trim it regularly. If you don't trim it, it's gonna be bushy like hell. So you better keep it nice and thin because after sometimes the bottom of this uh, moss will get brownish and it's not gonna look any beautiful. So you need, you need to trim it regularly. I have quite a few cups of uh, moss there. I'm gonna check how many. We were using only five Taiwan mosses. And actually I see that we were using weeping moss as well. Sometimes these mosses will mix up and you're not gonna see which moss is where, they just grow together. Weeping moss would grow a little bit downwards, obviously, and Taiwan moss would go everywhere. So these two will mix up and, and form this nice layout here. We are using the ADA ferts in this aquarium, uh, the green bridey mineral and the bridey K. And this is really good because you need to pump only three of these, three milliliters, one pump, equals to one milliliter and you can this these three milliliters is enough for a 60 liter tank daily you can see the ADA uh, uh, maintenance uh, stand right next to the aquarium on the left side of the picture. Really love that because you can just take out the, the ferts and just, you know, put the ferts in the aquariums. Uh, they're right next to it. You can keep the uh, maintenance tools on it and you can keep all kind of uh, fish feeders and, and, and all kind of other stuff on it. So it's a really nice and beautiful addition to the Green Aqua Gallery to have this uh, ADA stand here. Let me talk a little bit about the clearness of an aquarium. You don't see that, but OptiWide glass that all of our, our aquariums are built uh, from is a really clear glass that has no plumb in it. So actually there's a procedure that uh, plumb is being taken out of the glass and it results in a tintless, really transparent glass that will make your aquarium look empty without water. Actually, when you're looking at old school aquariums and you see some tint, you think that the it's the water that has some tint. Maybe that's the case, but most of the times it's just the glass that will give a little bit of, of, of yellowish, greenish tint to the water. If you use up to white glass, uh, even with a five millimeter or six millimeter glass thickness, that would result in a crystal clear uh, view of the aquarium and also Let's not forget about the filtration, which is the most important thing in the aquarium hobby. If you have a good filter, then you already won your game by, by having an algae-free tank, because if everything else is in, is in order and you have a, have a good biological filtration, that will take ammonia out of your system and you will have the crystal clear water that you always desired for. The basic idea is to have all the tech gear ready, stable, behind your aquarium. If you have that, then you're probably going to enjoy your aquarium for a long time until you want to rescape it. And keeping aquariums is going to be a nice hobby for you for a long time. It's, it's going to be relaxing for you to return home, sit back and just watch the underwater world evolving. All right, this was it. Next week, we're coming with a new video. If you like, please share, please comment, Please subscribe. Until next week, goodbye.